Hello once again everyone, Keta Kostman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Normally I talk about lumber prices in the lumber market, uh, housing, construction, what drives uh, lumber buying. Today I'm going to talk about uh, logs and lumber, the uh, feedstock for the sawmills. It's something that a lot of people don't really know very much about and don't understand. So you have of course the customers and the demand for lumber on the one side and the supply, uh, the loggers and the timber going into the sawmills on the other side. And so full year 2021 data has come out for Canada and the US of log export and lumber export and then lumber production and sales and U.S. Uh, building material wholesale sales. So let's dive right in now to look at those graphs because it really paints an interesting story and I have a few things to say about what's going on in the interplay between the logs and the lumber and um, the volumes of that, which I'm going to explain right now. So for this data, we use the HS codes, which are standardized globally. So the comparison definition of logs and lumber in Canada and in the US are exactly matched. And uh, Canada log exports to the world were on a steady decline from 2017 to 2020, hit bottom in 2020, then increased by 74% in 2021 compared to the previous year. Canada log exports to China were up 41% and to Japan up 217%. This made Canada log export volumes to Japan last year rise close to levels sent to China and to match those sent to Japan in 2018 and in 2019. I find this super interesting as the lumber producers uh, production is really tight and everybody's wondering where to find the wood that they need. And so now same situation uh, here in the US. Uh, log exports dipped after 2018 and remained relatively steady for 2019 to 2020, then improved last year but not quite to 2017 and 2018 levels. Year over year, U.S. log exports increased by 32% last year compared to 2020, with that to China increasing the most by 54%. So for these past two graphs with the Canadian and U.S. log, uh, I think it's important to note that um, the increase is based on year over year, and you can see that the past two or three years have had quite a drop as we know from the changes to society and the big disruptions for um, economic conditions. And if you compare back to 2017 and 2018, 2021 does not look like that much. And when I see this, I always wonder what's going on uh, in the economic conditions. What did we have back in 2017 and 2018 compared to what's happening now? And so these are values. It's important to note um, volume data is not available publicly by the governments. The reasons for that are political. Uh, so now we have uh, U.S. lumber exports last year were higher than any of the previous five years. And keep in mind that lumber prices were essentially triple uh, recently compared to historical. So U.S. lumber exports to the world in 2021 were uh, U.S. $1.22 billion compared to $778 million the previous year, an improvement of 55%. That to China dropped by 10% and to Japan dropped by 20%, while that to Canada rose by 69%. So that's interesting because this makes Canada by far the largest importer of U.S. lumber in 2021. Here we have the same data for Canada. We're really comparing apples to apples here. And again, it's values. So keep in mind that the price of lumber really rose a lot in the past couple of years compared to historical. Canada lumber exports dropped in 2019, then recovered in 2020. During last year, they rose beyond levels seen in the past five years. Canada lumber exports to the world in 2021 were 16.4 billion compared to 10 billion the previous year, an improvement of 63%. That to China dropped by 22% and to Japan rose by 106%. 
the value of wood to Japan, that's premium and high grade compared to the uh, utility and low grade that goes to China. Uh, Canada lumber exports to the U.S., of course by far the largest volume, grew by 66% last year compared to 2020. So this is a great graph for Canada. I use uh, BC, Alberta, and Quebec because uh, altogether those three pretty much cover most of what Canada produces and the data is not released nationally, it's released by province. This graph cr clearly demonstrates why lumber prices have been higher in the past two years, basic supply and demand. The table above shows how lumber production dropped from 2017 to 2020, then recovered slightly last year, while lumber sales improved from 2019 to 2020, then shot way up in 2021. So this is a reflection of those higher lumber prices recently compared to what would be considered normal, but the production is down quite a bit, and that's a problem for the customer in terms of how much wood do they need and what is the price that they're willing to pay for that given how the housing starts and home sales just keep going up. So if you can imagine in the future those blue bars staying relatively where they are and the red line flattening out from where it is now. And so this graph pulls it all together. Uh, there's no data for just the lumber sales in the US domestically, so this is all construction material including lumber. and this is still good though, as Madison's often explains, lumber is the leading indicator. So when lumber prices are high, some people start talking about switching to other building materials, and this is not so simple, as it requires retooling and other equipment changes on the part of builders. Uh, and those other building material prices also rise when lumber rises, often by more. So wholesale trade of all building materials in the U.S. increased by 30% last year compared to 2020 from U.S. $169.7 billion to U.S. $221 billion in 2021. So that's quite a pop in prices last year. And again, this is values, but it does account for both volume and value. And I really think uh, we've reached a new bottom and it's gonna stay up as it is on this graph. Okay, great. So interesting, right? It's pretty complicated. Running a sawmill is not easy. You know, being a logger, that's not easy. It's pretty intense work with uh, high-tech machinery that uh, is impacted by many things outside of your control like weather and market conditions, uh, macroeconomic. Um, so these are the kind of stories that uh, Madison's covers. Uh, we do put it on the website for the um, people who, are, who don't subscribe to any of my newsletters can still see that uh, when I have time and when the data comes out. So below here is a link to my website, madisonsreport.com. You can take a look there and read through some of the different things that we do. Uh, along the top, there's a menu. Click subscribe. You can fill out a form to get a sample of the full 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices that we cover uh, every week. And the market commentary that goes along with that, it's not just the price changes, but the reasons behind what is happening um, at the mills, what is happening on transportation, what is happening with demand and customers, inventories, all of these kind of things we talk about um, every week. So I'm going to leave it there for now because it's uh, turning into quite a long video. But if you want to see more videos as I have time to do them a couple times a month, click subscribe here on YouTube and click like so that it will be offered for other people to get a chance to see.